The Pikadev ultrasonic rangefinder uses sound waves to measure the distance to an object. This is like how bats can echolocate or how submarines use sonar. The sensor emits a high-pitched sound wave that travels through the air to some object. It reflects off the object and comes back to be received by the sensor. The rangefinder measures the duration of that round trip and uses the speed of sound to calculate a distance. That also means these sensors work best when pointing perpendicular to smooth surfaces. Angled surfaces can reflect sounds away, giving spurious readings. And soft materials may dampen the reflected sound or not reflect any sound at all. Water is actually a useful surface, and so you sometimes see these sensors being used to measure the height of liquid in a tank. G'day, I'm gonna show you how to get started with the Picadev Ultrasonic Rangefinder and a Raspberry Pi Pico. We'll connect these two together and experiment with measuring distances. But first, let's take a tour of the Ultrasonic Rangefinder. The Picadev Ultrasonic Rangefinder consists of two parts. There's the ultrasonic sensor and the smart module. The module features two Picadev connectors for daisy chaining with other Picadev modules. There are four ID switches for address configuration. Make sure all of these switches are off before proceeding. And there's also a user controllable LED on board, which turns on by default, kind of like a power LED. Plug the sensor into the four pin header on the smart module such that it points outwards. If you connect the sensor incorrectly, it may become damaged. To follow along, you'll of course need an assembled Picadev ultrasonic rangefinder, a Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W with the headers soldered facing down, a Picadev expansion board for Pico, and a Picadev cable to connect everything together. Plug your Pico into the expansion board such that the USB connector is on the same side as the two pin battery connector. Plug your cable into the expansion board and connect the other end to your rangefinder. And now we can connect to a computer with USB. Find the download section in the article and save the Python modules listed. Right click each link and select save link as. I'm saving mine to a Picadev folder I created in my documents. I've opened Thony connected to my Pico. You can see it here in the file pane and I'll select both of these files that I downloaded and right click to upload to the Pico. There they are. Return to the article and find the section for measuring distance. Copy that example code and paste it into a new script. Click run and I'll save this to my Raspberry Pi Pico as main.py. We immediately see some numbers streaming in the shell. And if we right click and show the plotter, we can see a plot of those values. This is the distance that the sensor is measuring in millimeters. You can see it's kind of all over the place at the moment. If I bring my hand in, we get a much more stable reading. If I move that back and forth, we can cause that line to go up and down. So we are measuring the distance between the sensor and my hand. And you may also be able to see that the onboard LED is flashing away. Let's take a closer look at the code. Like all Picadev projects, we start by importing the device module. Here we're importing the Picadev ultrasonic class. And we also import a sleep function. Next, we initialize the ultrasonic rangefinder by calling the initialization function, and that returns an object. We're gonna call that object ranger. So anytime we see the word ranger in this script, we're referring to this physical Picadev ultrasonic rangefinder. Next, there's an infinite loop. And in that infinite loop, we call a print statement. We're printing a value to the shell. In this case, the value is ranger.distance in millimeters. This property is the latest distance sample in millimeters. If you prefer imperial, you could read ranger.distance inch. That's what's giving us our values in the shell. Next, we're setting ranger.led to not ranger.led. So this is just going to toggle the state of the LED. And then there's a 0.1 second sleep. I've brought out the ruler and this box to act as a reflector, just so we can look at the response of this sensor. I'm holding the sensor in line with the start of the ruler here. And if I place the box at 20 centimeters, we are getting a reading in millimeters that's within about 10 millimeters of that range. If I move the box back to, let's go to 40, then we have a reading of 380 millimeters. So we're 
within about two centimeters. And that kind of makes sense. We're working with a speed of sound in air that's assumed here, although the actual speed of sound may change depending on air pressure or humidity. Let's go for a maximum range. at to about 1.8 meters. I'm having trouble going any further back than two and a half meters. Cool. Hmm. Science. As a quick remix, let's create a easy proximity alert. You might be familiar with cars or trucks having a reversing sensor that lets you know if you're getting a little too close to whatever's behind you. We could compare the distance being measured to some reference. And if we're too close, we can turn the LED on or print a message to the shell. I'm going to use the LED though. We could just set the state of ranger.led to ranger.distance in millimeters is less than 100. This will evaluate as a true or false, and that will be used to set the state of the LED. Really easy. We didn't even have to use an if statement. I can run this script again, hold my hand in front of the sensor, and here we are at around 240 millimeters. The LED is off. And if I move my hand closer, oh, there's a little bit of a flickering as I get close to the edge there. But then when I'm closer than 100 millimeters, we can see that LED is on. Off, on, off, on. Now it's also possible to run multiple ultrasonic rangefinders on the same PicoDev bus. Recall that we're already working with a rangefinder that has all its ID switches off. To add a second rangefinder, we first need to set a unique ID. For this example, we'll set ID switches one and three. Then daisy chain the new rangefinder onto the PicoDev bus. Now in the code, we can initialize the two different rangefinders. The first one I'm calling range A and passing the ID argument with all zeros to indicate that all the ID switches are off. The second one I'm calling range B. It has ID switches one and three in the on position. And so the ID argument has ones in the first and third position. The ID argument matches the switches. When we run the code, we can now sample and plot two different ranges independently. Now there's all sorts of practical projects you could do from here. Perhaps you could upgrade this project to use an audible alert if something is getting too close to the sensor or to trigger an alert if somebody walks through a door. You could create a musical instrument that you can play without touching. Be sure to check the article for some project inspiration. And there you have it, using sound to measure distance. If you have any questions or just wanna share a cool PicoDev project that you're working on, then tell us about it over in the forums. Until next time, happy making. Mm-hmm.